Welcome back, YouTube. Uh, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. And um, if you want to know what this is all about, the title of the video pretty much gives it away, but it's basically we're going to swap tires on this thing. Right now it's got the Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa um, SPs on it. And um, it's pretty much worn out. So we're going to put the uh, Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa 2s, the same ones that I've been using on my XSR 900, which by the way has been sold, but that's a different story. Um, so the tools that you're going to need for this is uh, very minimal. You're going to need a um, ratchet. Um, you don't need an extension, but you need a 10 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter wrench. This one is for the uh, rear caliper. We'll get to that later in the video. Uh, also, you need an eight millimeter hex, either um, like a socket, socket will work. Or if you have an eight millimeter hex wrench, the socket I think works better. For the rear axle, you need a 32 millimeter socket uh, for the axle bolt. And uh, you also need a 30 millimeter for the front axle. And then the pitch bolts are 10 millimeter. So that's what the, um, the 10 millimeter socket is for. Um, this extension, I just had it on because I was doing something earlier, but you don't need that one. So for the front, uh, basically you need the, the hex, which you'll loosen up the, the caliper and take the caliper off and then you'll need to loosen the pinch bolts on both sides with a 10 millimeter and then on the other side is the um, socket which you'll need the 30 millimeter which is right there and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, caliper on both sides loosen up these uh, eight millimeter hexes take the caliper off loosen up the pinch bolts and then loosen up the axle slide it out and the wheel should come right out um, i also put this tape on here so that tomorrow morning when i replace the tire uh, I'll remember which side is the left side and right side because once you take this off Especially if you take the tire off and you move the wheel and you forget which way the tire was um, You're gonna forget which rotation it's going so I put a little piece of tape on it I did the same for the rear so I put the tape on here Although the rear is pretty easy to remember because you got the chain on one side But I just put it on there anyway uh, The biggest thing is there's a bolt here for the uh, rear caliper and then there's one right here the problem with that is, is when you have it up on the stand, especially on this one, uh, you can't put a socket on it. So, but you, I have a wrench. That's what the wrench is for. So you can take this bolt out and then the caliper will come off. And a couple other things we're gonna do is uh, while the uh, wheel is off, we're gonna take this chain and we're gonna soak it in some um, uh, kerosene and clean it up real good with a brush. The other thing, I'm gonna take uh, the chain guard off on the bottom and top and clean that off mainly on the inside from any um, chain lubricant that got slung around. And you can also lift the chain up here and clean this uh, chain guard off real good, or the chain slide, I should say. So we're gonna do all that and uh, get it all cleaned up and uh, should be ready to go. So first things first, we're going to uh, take off the uh, caliper. And one thing to note that there is two spacers here in between the caliper and the, uh, the actual bracket. So just remember, put these back. And they look the same, so it doesn't matter which side's which, just make sure you put them back in between. And then the caliper should slide right off. So it took a little bit of maneuvering to get it out. Um, basically, uh, the easiest way to do it, because the pads are so closely together, um, if you give it a little bit of a twist and collapse that piston, it will help with um, giving you a little bit more room to twist it. You also got to be careful not to scratch your rims. Normally, if you have rubber brake lines, I would say don't hang your caliper, but these have uh, braided steel lines, so I'm not too worried about letting it hang. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then uh, we'll loosen the pinch bolts. All right, now that we have that done on the other side, you can take your socket. So then you take your 10 millimeter socket and you just loosen these. You don't have to take them out. Same thing on this side. And then once they're loose, you just take your 30 millimeter socket and crack your axle loose. One thing I forgot to mention, if you're trying to take this loose and your axle spins, just re-tighten these pinch bolts 
and then break this nut loose. Make sure you don't uh, forget this spacer, this washer, to put that back on the right way. And once these are loose, you can pretty much just pull your axle out. If it doesn't come out, you can wiggle the wheel or you can take a rubber mallet and gently tap on this. I would put the nut back on and just tap on the nut. That should come out. And that's the front wheel removal. This axle is what's holding it in. So sometimes this will spin if you have that nut on the end. Uh, mine did, so I just basically just gave this thing a little tightening and then broke the nut loose. It's pretty easy. And then you slide this out. Make sure you put it back in the same way. I noticed they don't have any grease on theirs, so we're not gonna grease it up. And when you're taking off, be careful not to uh, break off your sensor. It's your uh, ABS sensor. So be careful with that. It should clear, but just be careful not to get too aggressive. One of the things we are going to do is um, we're going to take these pads out and kind of give it a little bit of a cleaning and um, grease up the back end. On the back side, there's these clips. So we're going to grease them up a little bit so that they don't squeak. Because if you noticed in my previous videos, they squeaked a little bit. But now onto the back wheel. So for the back wheel, you need your 10, 10 millimeter socket or your wrench. And again, for this bolt, this one's kind of a pain in the butt, so just where it is. Now you take your 32 millimeter socket. And there is a washer on this one as well. So make sure you don't lose that. Again, if this one gives you any trouble, you can just give it a little smack with the uh, rubber mallet. And there's the rear wheel removal. So what we're also going to do is clean up the sprocket. Make sure you don't lose this bearing that's in here. Got to put that back in. Same thing on the other side, there's a bearing here. Make sure that these go back in. I'm just gonna leave them in there. And uh, one final note is that this bracket sits right on this lip right here. So make sure that stays. And then your axle slides and your axle comes through this. Be careful your uh, sensors here. So make sure you don't lose that. And that's about it. So it takes a little bit of wiggling and getting it removed, but it's not that bad. And then we're gonna take this off and we're gonna clean all this up. I know it's hard to tell on camera, but all this chain debris, we're gonna clean all this up. And so tomorrow, <clears throat> we're gonna take this uh, wheel and the new tires, as you can see right here, the new tires. We're gonna take them, put them on, get them mounted, balanced, get them fit just right. And then uh, we'll have it going once again. As you saw before yesterday, I took the bike apart. Uh, we haven't cleaned it yet because I just haven't had time. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean some parts first, but we did get the uh, tires mounted and they're looking good. Brand new set of uh, Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa tubes. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this tire, it is a fantastic tire. It's, um, it's cheaper than the uh, Super Corsas. Uh, depending on where you get them, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks cheaper. They last a hell of a lot longer. Uh, I've had three sets of these tires on my XSR 900, and they are fantastic. Their grip is phenomenal. Uh, I just, I can't say enough good things about it. So the sprockets have uh, been cleaned up real good. I just took a rag with um, some kerosene, dipped it in kerosene, and wiped off all the uh, crud from the chain uh, grease that was on there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the wheel up. Just use some um, like Honda spray polish or maybe some simple green just to get all the dust and stuff off the wheel. Next thing on the list is the chain. So I got a little um, plastic bucket and I dumped some kerosene in there, this stuff. And now I'm just going to use my scrub brush, my grunge brush and clean the chain up. And then I'm going to clean the inside, all this dirt and debris. Same thing with the, the chain stuff that's in here. I'm going to take off this chain guard, clean that up, clean up the bottom chain guard, and then we're going to put the wheel back on. 
And I'm not gonna film the chain cleaning because that's boring and wiping down the wheel. I'm not gonna film all that, but I just wanted to let you know what I'm doing next. And then we'll put the wheel back on and I'll put the torque specs and what all you gotta do and how to torque it down and all that stuff. I took the uh, brake pad out and basically what you do is you just press this piston back in just a little bit. What I did was I took, sorry, I'm trying to hold this with one hand. But basically I just took a screwdriver and put it between the back of the pad and the piston and just gave it a little bit of a gentle push, just to push them back in a little bit. And then what happens is the brake caliper slides out of those grooves right there into the middle and then you can just pull the pad out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of them out and I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease right here on the edges and just a dab right here on the back where you see those marks from the piston. And what I'm gonna use is this ceramic brake parts lubricant, ceramic extreme. Honda uses this a lot. If I can get the top off, I'll show you what it looks like. It's purple, but it works really well. It looks like that. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little dab of it on there. Let me try to hold this camera and work. So what I do is just put a little dab right here where the brake caliper slides, or the brake piston, or I'm sorry, I don't even know what I'm saying. The brake pad slides, and then just put a little dab right here on the back. And that's probably too much, so I'm gonna wipe it with my finger. But that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna put both brake pads back in. I'm gonna do the other, same on the other side. And this is the same for a car too. So if you get a little bit of a squeak, like right there where you're coming to a stop, or you're just a gentle, squeak this is what stops it so um you can do this for a car so that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna do them on both sides do the same thing on the back and then we're gonna reassemble the wheels put everything back on and then i'll give you all the torque specs all right so i got the wheel back on i didn't feel like i need to film how to put the wheel back on because it's the same for pretty much every motorcycle especially sport bikes and there's like a million and five videos on how to put tires back on, but basically you take it, put it back on the same way you took it off in reverse order. Uh, the one thing you gotta make sure is that these uh, adjuster uh, brackets, this little square thing goes back in the same direction you took it off. Same thing on the other side, you know, obviously put the chain back on. It's easier if you loosen these adjusters and run them in a little bit, but then you have to make sure that the chain slack is good and that your uh, wheel is true and running perfectly and not off to the left or right a little bit. Since my chain slack was good to begin with, I never loosened these. It would have been much easier, but I didn't do that. Uh, I suggest you do it. It's just much easier, but then you have to go through the whole rigmarole of adjusting your chain slack. And there's a sticker here that tells you what the slack's supposed to be. I just decided to bypass that step. I had to wrestle with it just a little bit harder, but I, I saved myself a bunch of headache. As you can see, the chain is looking nice and clean. I clean the sprockets, I clean all that junk off, I clean the inside of this uh, chain guard. It had a bunch of uh, chain debris and just grease and stuff, so I cleaned all that up. Cleaned the wheel up. The only thing I have left is put the caliper back on, but the, uh, <clears throat> the torque spec for this is 88.51 foot-pounds, so I put it 88.5, and I'm going to torque it down with my uh, torque stick. And then I'm gonna put the caliper uh, bracket back on and I guess, hang on one sec, I'll tell you what it is. So once you put these back on, the torque spec for these two bolts that hold it on is 22.13 foot pounds. So I'm just gonna put it on 22, it'll be fine. And then I'll torque those down and then this is ready. Make sure that when you put it back on, pump the rear brake up because we did compress the caliper. And yeah, it's looking, looking much better, much nicer, it's clean. I still got to put the chain lube on it, so let's not forget that. And then we're going to move to the front in just a minute. Again, 88.51 foot-pounds for the rear axle and 22.13 for the bracket for the caliper. All right, I got the front wheel on. I got one of the brake, uh, brake calipers on. Don't forget the spacers in here. So the front axle bolt is uh, 59 foot-pounds and then 36 for the pinch bolts. I'm sorry, 8.85. 8.85 and 36 for the caliper. So again, 59 for the um, axle nut, 8.85 and 36 for the caliper. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all this down, check the torque, and then I'm gonna pump the brake up. I already put this side on, but I haven't tightened it yet, so I need to make sure that it seats itself. 
And once it seats itself after it's pumped up, then I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down and then give it a little spin, make sure everything's good. The back is good, everything's tightened down. At the end of the video, I'll um, also put in the description the uh, torque specs for the calipers, the pinch bolts, and the uh, axle nut. It's about 150 damn degrees outside with about 500% humidity. So it is hot as two hells outside. So I might not ride it today. I just might wait till the weekend and just take it for a spin because it is just way too hot today. I'm out here sweating like a dog anyway. But uh, anyway, the bike should be all good to go. And if you have any questions about the video, I'm sorry I didn't film it. I don't know where my chest mount is or my head mount. I just can't find it. I got a disaster going on. Uh, so I'm sorry for the, the, the poor holding the camera and trying not to shake and all that stuff. Uh, I apologize for that. On the next one, I'll make sure I find my, my equipment. But anyway, so that's the video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them below. And if you haven't already, help my channel out. Hit that like and subscribe button. It would really help me out. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.